Hey guys, how are you going? In this video, I'm going to be explaining what Python virtual environments are, why we need to use them, and of course, how to actually use them. So, essentially, a virtual environment is an isolated Python environment for running your Python projects. And technically speaking, they are nothing more than simply just a directory that sits within your Python project. So, they definitely aren't as complex as they may originally seem. And just keep in mind that this tutorial is going to cover the recommended way to use virtual environments in Python 3.5 or above. So basically, it's not going to work for Python 2.7. So, with that being said, uh, one of the main reasons to use Python virtual environments is to resolve problems that arise when you have multiple different projects on the same system that depend on and use different versions of the same package. So I'm going to be showing you an example of this problem and of course we're going to fix it using virtual environments. So uh, as we can see right here in my directory structure I have two main directories here or folders. I've got project A and I've got project B. So essentially these two hypothetical projects are completely unrelated. Inside the main.py for project A we can see here that project A is importing requests okay so the requests package and also it requires requests version 1.2.3 or less to actually work correctly and the reason for this is because uh, the get method um, has significant changes in version 2.2 or above and right here we've got a hypothetical example of what could happen in a real project and of course these things right here where functions or methods change their behavior is very common and one of the reasons why projects requires specific uh, versions of a particular package so right here we've got a hypothetical example of this project right here requiring requests 1.2.3 or less okay so, of course, with this in mind, we can go ahead and we can install the requests package at version 1.2.3 or less. So, this is done by saying pip install then requests at version less than or equal to 1.2.3. Press enter and now, of course, pip is going to get requests at version 1.2.3 just like that. So now, if I was to run the pip show then requests command, we can see here that we, uh, uh, we indeed have version 1.2.3 of the requests package. So now, essentially, the requirements for the main.py or uh, for project A um, have been satisfied. We have the exact version of the requests package for this to work. So now let's head inside project B and we can see here project B requires requests 2.2 or above. So in this case we can see where the problem may arise or what's actually um, happening here. Um, and of course now if I was to try and run project B um, using my system um, it's not going to work because of course I have request version 1.2.3 installed. So of course if I go pip show request once again uh, it's uh, version 1.2.3 so of course it's not going to work. So uh, in order for this to work I need to basically say you know pip uninstall uh, requests and then after this uh, I'll need to actually reinstall requests, so pip install request, this time getting the most recent version, which is actually version uh, 2.22. So now I've reinstalled requests, and of course now pip show requests is going to give me uh, version 2.22. So now, of course, project B is going to work, but unfortunately, project A is not going to work. So that right there is one of the problems uh, when you don't use virtual environments. So it can definitely be really difficult um, to make sure you have uh, the correct versions of the package um, when having multiple projects. So um, with this being said, let's solve this problem using virtual environments. But first, I want to uninstall the global installation of the requests package. So I'm going to say pip uninstall requests and we're going to start with a fresh and clean slate. So 
Um, to create a virtual environment, you want to go within your project a directory or within your project directory, just like this. And once we're inside the directory of the project inside the command line, to create a virtual environment, you simply say python m, then you say venv. And this right here is the command to create a virtual environment. The next thing you type is the name of the directory for the virtual environment. In this case, I'm just going to simply name it the same thing, so venv. If I press enter right here, we can see that we've got a new directory inside the project called uh, virtual environment or venv and that basically comes from our last string which we supply to the command. So now if we inspect this directory we can see we have a few things going on but uh, in particular inside the scripts directory and also this is going to be different on Mac or Linux um, you may instead have a bin directory basically bin is the same as scripts um, it's just that it's called scripts on Windows so inside the scripts directory we can see here we've got our own version of Python right here so python.exe and basically we can see that of course this right here is um, a separate environment um, for running Python okay um, and also more importantly inside lib and then site packages we can see we have basically no packages installed for the virtual environment as of yet so essentially we've got this virtual environment a bunch of executables and a um, and a place to store packages so now we're going to basically go within this virtual environment and instead try to execute project A within the virtual environment instead and along with that we're of course going to install the correct version of the requests library. So let's just go down here to activate or go within your virtual environment you simply say and this is for Windows so for Windows you say VM just like this then you say scripts then you say activate just like this you press enter and now you can see that we have uh, venv in brackets as a prefix to our command line prompt. Um, a different way to activate the virtual environment, so I'll just go ahead here and just actually um, deactivate it just like this and now you're back out of the virtual environment. Um, an alternative way to activate it on Windows is going to be venv scripts and then activate.bat press enter and the same thing happens well um, I believe that works on command line um, maybe not PowerShell um, but it definitely works for command line but anyway um, if you're using uh, basically anything other than Windows so Linux or Mac um, the way you uh, activate the virtual environment is going to simply be source vm bin and then activate um, just like this okay so that is how to do it on uh, Linux or Mac. Um, so uh, let's go back here and actually just activate the virtual environment. So now that we're inside the virtual environment, we can go ahead and we can actually install the request library at our desired version. So I can say right here, pip install request, then less than equal to 1.2.3 and press enter. And now inside the lib and then site packages directory we can see we now have requests inside here so this is perfect um, so now um, inside the virtual environment if I was to say you know python then main.py and run this we can see it works fine and also um, it's going to be using requests at version 1.2.3 if I say pip show request just like this, we can see, of course, we get 1.2.3. So this right here is your virtual environment, and you can, of course, run your scripts inside here perfectly fine. If I was to uh, basically say deactivate here and go back to the normal or global mode, and then try to rerun my project, we can see it does not work because we have no requests uh, package installed globally on the system outside of the virtual environment. Okay, so essentially we can go uh, now inside the project B directory and do the exact same thing. So let's cd out of here and say cd project underscore B and do the exact same thing. So 
that'll be um, Python dash M VM VM press enter and we get the exact same thing right here inside this directory um, and once it's done we can of course install um, pip install requests at version 2.2 um, the latest version okay you know what I forgot to go inside the virtual environment so let's pip uninstall requests real quick here and activate the environment so that'll be uh, scripts or VM and then scripts and then activate just like this and then we can say pip install requests once again and um, now we can try running uh, the, um, the main.py so python main.py and we can see it works perfectly fine pip show requests is going to give us version 2.22 so as we can see here we have solved the problem of the two projects having the same uh, dependency with different versions by having virtual environments to execute our Python scripts within. So now I do want to show you real quickly here an example of it working on uh, Ubuntu. So I've got this virtual box here with Ubuntu server running on it and I'll just get out of the virtual environment here. Essentially right here of course we have this uh, main.py so I can just say right here uh, Python dash M VM and then VM to the, so the exact same thing um, It'll need to be Python 3 for this particular system press enter and we can see it's loading But it works the exact same way and to activate it. We say source and then VM bin The so source VM bin then activate just like this and now we can see we get the exact same thing right here um, VM is prefix on the command line Okay, so um, that is basically how to activate and use virtual environments. However, I do want to show you one more thing, and that involves the requirements.txt file. So essentially, um, we're inside project B right now, and if I want to give my friend or my mate um, this project to run on his own system, he needs to know that you know he needs uh, request version 2.2. Um, or above. So for that, I need to basically tell him to install that library. But of course, if I have 50 libraries, it's going to be hard to tell him that. So we can solve this by using uh, what's called a requirements.txt file. Um, and basically, it just lists each package with their versions. So for example, um, to generate the Python, sorry, uh, to generate the requirements.txt file, um, you simply just say pip and then freeze and then an, uh, just a carrot or a, uh, you know, greater than sign. Um, uh, and then you just say requirements.txt just like this. Press enter and uh, we can see inside project B, we've got a new file um, and it's called requirements.txt. As we can see, we've got a few things related to requests itself, but ultimately we've got here requests 2.22. Okay, so um, of course now if I was to uh, you know upload this to a Git repository, I would include the requirements.txt file, and of course my friend can download this, and um, once he's actually got the requirements.txt file and is within his virtual environment, he can simply um, to install everything. He could simply say pip install and then dash r requirements.txt just like this. And when you press enter here, it's basically going to go through all of these packages and install them at the version which is specified right here. And um, that's just something to definitely consider, especially if you want your project to survive in the future. If you want to go back to it one day and try to use it, or of course, uh, transporting it across um, you know, the internet or on GitHub, uh, for many people to use and download. So that right there is virtual environments in Python. I hope that made sense. If anything did not make sense, definitely comment below and just let me know. Ask me a question and do all of that stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.